Greg some kind of holiday. As it turned out, I never quite managed to fulfill my promise. Conglomerate, the Sionovores, Askren and the Daleks sort of that. Still, at the time I was determined to take Greg to Ormelia, but as usual I was having trouble with the Helmic regulators. Come on, come on. Why do you keep doing that? Lucky Greg's fast asleep in his room, otherwise you, old girl, would be witnessing a bit of good old-fashioned human exasperation. Thankfully, I'm above all that. At least you'd better hope I am. Well, what was that in aid of? The TARDIS had landed without having any coordinates set. In fact, it had repeatedly refused to accept the coordinates for Amelia. I'd been hoping for a miracle, but no, this wasn't Amelia. There wasn't a sign of the brilliant golden sky or the gently undulating pale green sea. Instead, the TARDIS had apparently yet again displayed its penchant for the grimy, odious, and no doubt dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. Just what I needed. A fifth-class compartment in a space cargo liner by the looks of it. Yes. This seems to be some kind of loading bay. Cranes up there. Deck hatches here and... Unfortunately, the TARDIS had landed on a deck hatch, one which had just decided to open. I wonder if that woke Greg up. <clears throat> of course, the TARDIS is technically indestructible. Technically. That was the word used in the manual. It's at times like this that I start to worry about that word, technically. I resolved myself to finding someone in authority. From past experience, I knew I might be letting myself in for accusations, incarceration, or possibly something a little more terminal. But what choice did I have? Hello? Hello? Um... I'm sorry to bother you, but... For a moment, I thought I'd glimpsed a figure. But now there was nothing there. Huh. Sorry if I offended you. Well, I hope the rest of the crew are a little more helpful. Right, here we go. The ship, if it was a ship, was depressingly large and seemingly empty. Certainly there was no sign of care and attention to even the most accessible parts of the architecture. It was all covered in a kind of smoky grime which seemed to get worse as I pressed on into the ship. Smoky, yes. Toast on by the smell of it. <coughs> oh dear. Right. <sighs> this is getting me nowhere. <laughs> I reckon the architect gave up on this place too. It looks unfinished. Iron girders and scaffolding. 
I did. Um, you needn't worry about it being faulty. Works fine. Could do with a bit of a clean. Who are you? Uh, I'm the doctor. Who are you? Vilgreth. Captain Vilgreth. Uh, captain. Well, if you're the captain, what are you doing? In the boiler room? Yes. Stop. Why shouldn't I be here? Who? The boilers, my companion. Oh, yes. Um, well, anyway, Vil, um, uh, Captain Vilgreth. You do not believe I am Captain, do you? Well, uh, um, far be it from me to, uh... Maybe because I am so big and ugly. Oh, no, no, um... I... And smelly? But well, so uh... what? I am Captain, I bad. When I say so. Of course, yes. Um, Why are you here? Um, you better not have come to blow me up. Blow you? Why should I want to do that? People do. They come here, hide away, try to throw spanners in works. I throw them in works one day. Why? Because I don't like them. No, I, I mean, why do they want to blow you up? They are officials. I live here. I pay no tax, no nothing. They don't like that. I see. Um, it does seem a bit extreme, though, to blow you up. You don't, uh, you don't harm anyone, do you? Me? No trouble to anyone. No. Good, good. Um, well, I'm not here to blow you up. I'm actually here by accident. I was just getting my bearings when one of your deck hatches opened up and my ship disappeared into your hold. That isn't good news for you. I know. Uh, that's why I was wondering... You don't understand. Deck hatches lead to furnace. Furnace. Uh... Well, well, it should be all right. The TARDIS is indestructible, technically. Uh, nothing that indestructible. I think it is, but I wouldn't like to leave it in this um, furnace too long. You see, I've got a friend in my ship. I'm hoping he's still asleep. Fried friend, Doctor. Please, if you'd just give me a couple of your crew to help. Crew? There is no crew. Just my darlings and but when I came out of my ship, I thought right. I saw... Pressure's okay here, so I'll help you. Take you to furnace. But listen. Don't raise any hopes. This is my furnace. I'll open door now.
sit. Not even hot. Well done, old girl. Oh, thank goodness for that. You built this? No, but I know everything about it. Well, almost everything. Very small. It, it's bigger on the inside. Hmm. Um, look, I'll have to check her out. Would you like to come in and take a look? Yeah, sure, Doctor. I think. Come on. Okay. Well, Vilgreth was bowled over by the TARDIS. He did comment that it was a mite too clean for his liking, but he admired the technology. In fact, technology, gadgetry and engineering of all kinds was a bit of an obsession with Vilgreth. Now, I admit that I have more than a passing interest in all things technical, but bipolar vectoring modular flange jets and arc tunnel boosters seem to be the only sort of things Vilgreth lived for. Apparently he'd salvaged his ship, which, in confirmation of my suspicions, he told me it was enormous, and he'd wandered around the galaxy in it ever since. But it was the propulsion system which intrigued me. You know, Doctor, I like you. How about some tea? Tea? How did you know I have some? You have some. I have some. I was inviting you to the bridge. You mean you're a tea drinker? Of course. That's incredible. Um, yes, I accept, of course. Um, but I've a few checks to finish here. No problem. I'll go make tea. You finish up here. I'll see you on the bridge. But how do I get to the bridge? Take I mean, the first lift you come right. to can't miss it. All right. Thanks very much. You know, you're lucky. Why? You're lucky old TARDIS hear this special stuff. Just before you came, I find half-melted spaceship and furnace. Really? I hope there wasn't anyone no, in it. No, nobody's in it. Just a drifter. Must have stuck to the hull, then fallen down a waste chute. Oh. Still, you lucky. Yes. See you for tea. Okay, bye-bye. There was only the slightest of scorching in some of the outer shell configuration components. Otherwise, the TARDIS was fine. So, I set off for the bridge. Um, first lift I come to, right. What? Who are you? Are you? I thought there was no crew. Oh dear me. Wait a minute. Justice? I recognize that uniform. It's got the Ormelian security insignia on it. You waste time, stranger. You are not part of this. Part of what? Don't you mean why? It is no affair of mine if you choose to mock my warning. Warning? What warning? Leave now, or you too will be destroyed. destroyed. I have planted an explosive device on this ship. It is operating on a time mechanism. A time bomb? You're one of those officials. I've heard all about you. Why can't you leave Vilgreth alone? It is you have got anything better to do with your time than pursue a harmless... The time bomb will explode in three cycles. I must leave now. Now I have told you, you must make your own choice. You cold-blooded lizard. Vilgreth! Vilgreth! You do not understand, stranger. I understand only too well. Vilgreth! The reptilian security operatives scuttled away. I was already in the lift, heading for the bridge. Vilgreth! Ah, oh, Doctor, why shout? Tea is ready. No, no, forget the tea. What's wrong with my nothing, tea? Nothing, nothing's wrong with your tea. Now listen to me. I tried to tell you earlier, I did see someone in the cargo hold. Nobody else, just me. No, Vilgreth. I've just seen him, an Ormelian security operative. <laughs> One of those people you told me about, the officials who want to blow you up. Official spanners in works. 
Yes, 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 a big spanner. He's planted a time bomb. We've got to find it and deactivate it. I have a tracker device. Made it myself. We'll find the bomb. Come on. We set off on a frantic search. As we continued into the workings of the ship, I could feel the panic within me mounting. The ship really was beyond belief in both its size and sheer grime everywhere, and furnaces and boilers on all levels belching out smoke and cinders. The bomb might have been hidden under any amount of rubbish. There wasn't a trace of anything on Vilgreth's tracker, and I had no idea how long three cycles were. Vilgreth, this is hopeless. Maybe we should escape in my ship while we can. No, I cannot leave my darlings. They are my life. But... No, we find Bob. I find them before. This one a little more difficult. But you go if you want. Vilgret, I couldn't even if I wanted to. I'm completely lost. Uh, you are a nice person, my only friend. Oh, come on, come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Chalk points. You find something? No, no. But I think I know where we might find something. Chalk marks. This is no time for food. No, no. When I first arrived here, I made chalk marks on the walls so I could find my way back to the TARDIS. The TARDIS is in furnace chamber. Yes, yes. But I made the first chalk mark near to where I first saw the Armenian operative. You mean Bob may be there? Let's go! The trail was easy to follow. We just went in the opposite direction to that indicated by my arrows. A couple of them were a little obscured, but we soon found our way. This is place? Yes, there's the open deck hatch that I landed on. Oh, Bob! Use the tracker, then. What's this? A viewport. Oh, look! We're coming into orbit around a planet. <laughs> I think I recognize it. The planet's only good for one thing. Vilgret, the tracker, it's found something. I've diffused a number of bombs during my time, but the one we found under the viewport was a doddle. Ha! Ah, there we are. One detonator safely removed. You do good, Doctor. Now we have tea time. Yes. You know, that planet is familiar. An hour or so later, and we were relaxing after the most enjoyable tea-drinking session I've ever had. Vilgreth had obtained an incredible variety of brands from various cargo ships he'd salvaged. <sighs> My taste buds are exhausted. How long will you stay, Doctor? Um, well, uh... My friend Greg will be waking up soon, I expect. So, uh, I'd better make tracks. You have another friend? Well, yes. I I've had lots of friends over the years. This is a strange thing. I... I never had a friend before. And now you go. Ah, well... But you have your boilers. And I'll come back and visit you. Okay. See you again someday. I must get back to my darlings. Right. Of course. Uh, that planet. It's Ormelia. Vilgreth. You've brought me to my destination. You go there? Well, yes. It's a lovely place. Why don't you? The boilers what all that was about. For a while I had intruded upon Vilgret's solitary life, but now I was to go. He seemed easily resigned to his solitary ways. For a moment I gazed at the image of Ormelia on the bridge viewport. We were close now. We'd soon be in orbit. Then some puzzling thoughts entered my head. The melted spaceship. The salvaged cargo. The primitive nature of the propulsion system. Furnaces. Boilers. Solid fuel for a spaceship. It's only good for one thing, Doctor. 
What? You! But I thought you... Infernal? I have been watching you, Doctor. Your mind is beginning to work. Why didn't you deactivate the bomb if you had no escape route? I had a mission, Doctor. A suicide mission? To get a tax evader? A ludicrous idea. Yes. Yes. Planets only good for one thing. That was it. The solid fuel for Vilgreth's ship. Planets. Stelpor explained that a whole fleet of planet eaters, as they were appropriately known, had been built centuries ago to demolish planetoids and asteroid belts to clear space lanes, but most of them had been scrapped. A few, however, had been salvaged, or rather stolen, by various museums and enthusiasts. And this planet eater was heading straight for Ormelia. I've got the detonator core, but Vilgreth... But he seems so harmless. I follow you here, lizard. You will not harm my darling. But Vildred, don't you understand what you've been doing all these years? I know only my darlings and me. Come with me in the TARDIS, Vilgreth. I know you didn't understand. I understand what my darlings need to live. But you... I think not of others. See, Doctor, now give me the detonator core. Stipple, don't use that gun. We ran blindly to where we'd left the bomb. Vilgreth, wounded badly, stumbled behind us. The detonator was reset in no time, on a very short fuse. Come on, we must get to the TARDIS! Stelpor! Stelpor! Hold him here! Stop him from doing damage to the bomb! Run! But I, I can't leave! How, oh, Doctor? I... My friend... Kills me. No, I. Not fair. Vilgreth, I. I... As the TARDIS doors closed, I paused for a moment. Dazed, I think. I was killing two people. And one of them had thought of me as a friend. The time for thinking was over. But the memory haunts me to this day. Oh, see. 
stage to the planet Grinovia. <laughs> 